And this is our plan of attack. Banks have become an essential threat to our democracy. So consider this justice. Thank you for listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com, the number one listener-supported radio station on the Internet. Please help support this station so this battle can continue forward. Revolution Radio! Thank you for listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. Any commercial advertising you may hear in this program is of the sole discretion and benefit of the host of whose program you are listening to. Revolution Radio does not endorse any commercial products, nor does it accept monetary compensation for on-air advertising of commercial products, nor will it ever. We are and shall remain 100% listeners supported. Any product advertising on this program are considered used at higher risk, and Revolution Radio shall not be held liable for any claims or damages received from any product advertised within this program. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Do you feel as if you don't belong? Do you know you were meant for something more? Well, you were. Knowledge of who you are and where you really are from is within your reach. Join Janet Carolessen. Dr. Sasha Lesson as they search for the answers as they open up the Stargate to the cosmos. Aloha everyone and welcome to Stargate to the Cosmos and I'm your host Janet Care Lesson with my co-host Dr. Sasha Lesson and my producer is a mad painter also known as Thomas Becker. And today we have Sienna Lee. And uh, bear with me one second while I pull up her bio. My computer was going around in circles like they do. Okay, one second. And um, Sienna is uh, calling in to us from Ecuador. So we'll have to find out what brings her down to living down there. Is she from there or they relocated there. So she is Sienna Lee, a former psychologist, primal therapist, present author, transformational midwife, and inceptor of Rise Multiversity. She's facilitated growth and healing for many people across, across the globe, spanning decades. It all started when she launched a growth center called Stepping Stone in San Rafael, California, taking primal therapy and integrating it with other approaches of feminine care to bring healing. Life brought her the gift of a mentor after that that taught her dynamic individuation process, synthesizing embodiment with self, with deep self-analysis. She had the honor of midwifing many who stepped up using Ayasha Loves, A-Y-S, Ayasha, tell me how you pronounce that, Loves Amazing Methods that brought them potent rebirth. And she's been fortunate to have traveled the globe, working, sharing, and facilitating transformation for many decades. 
And I'm getting some feedback. I'm not sure what that's about. So I'll have to check my equipment. Um, before we bring on Tiana, Dr. Lesson, are you there? Would you like to uh, say something about your your work and um, all this type of stuff that Tiana has been doing? It sounds a bit similar. Um, I, uh, of course, uh, I was with Stan Groff many, many years and uh, I've worked with a number of people in, in uh, that modality. I use uh, Primal, but I've expanded quite a bit. But my main work of late has been uh, with, uh, I was with Hal Stone and Sidra Stone, studying with them for 12 years or so. And so what I like most of all is some combination of cathartic release and then recentering and being able to uh, access the parts or subpersonalities beyond their wants to their needs so that a, a, a center, after reviewing the situation from one's aware ego, uh, can make decisions. In other words, I, my whole aim is to put people back into the uh, decider post themselves and to so, not them, let them be hung up on me. Yes, and I, I was just uh, reading, there's a wonderful bio by Sienna on AquarianRadio.com. I invite you to read it, but I'm going to have Sienna tell what she wants us to know about her past and what brought her to this path of uh, consciousness and enlightenment. So, welcome to the show, Sienna. Well, thank you so much for having me, Sasha and Janet. I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to share Whoops. So you were a child of the 60s, and um, oh, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't want to read this verbatim. You went to um, Hate Ashbury in the 67 or some of love. So anyway, would you like to just tell us a little bit about your background, and uh, then we'll get to your book this, uh, later on. Go ahead, please. Okay. Well, yeah, I was probably a real early indigo, I suspect. I don't know. We don't like to label people, but... You know, um, I was calling BS <laughs> from day 16 where my protest was trying to uh, overdose on sleeping pills, ended up in a mental hospital for a few weeks. With mm -hmm. that, uh, but I was really searching to find something outside of the artificial construct, uh, uh, something that was uh, source connected and soul connected and connected to what was authentic and embodied. And I was one of those wild mad young girls that uh, absolutely had to transit out of this artificial structure because it was, I was just, uh, my soul chose uh, extreme uh, reactivity to it where it was untenable. So I've been on a search since I was 20. I left Chicago when I was 20 and my psychoanalyst and said, you know, you know, you may be onto something here, but I got to get me some sunshine. And I, I felt the call. I was feeling the call to the new earth back then, as of course so many of us were. And went, to, yeah, went to the Haight Ashbury and ended up in the Gestalt Full Theater family and uh, then spent um, <clears throat> many years uh, studying with an incredible avatar called Asha Love, who's on the other side. Or uh, probably in the new earth from when I gather right now. And uh, she was incredible because she uh, had uh, an approach that was outside the construct and was created out of female intelligence. So the processes, I mean, it's incredible hearing Sasha talk because I'm very aligned with everything you said, Sasha. And we probably are coming at it from very different ways, but I also work with the subpersonalities. With I've created a course now called Shadow Synthesis. I don't know. Am I going too fast here? No, you're doing great. Yeah, we're okay. backing you. Okay. So, uh, so you know, this is like what? I mean, I'm old now. This is like many decades later. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, although um, I, I shock people with how it, I don't. It appeared nearly my age because I've been transforming energy outside of uh, these uh, programs that uh, these anthropic programs that uh, I got initiated into. But since I've spent uh, many decades uh, transmuting them and looking for many different techniques and approaches to uh, help people break free really from the construct 
because all of the trauma-based mind control, all of the programming, patriarchy, and all of it has delivered us into, you know, from my experience, into a slave system where our souls are being harvested and utilized and, uh, you know, are not in our possession. And the whole secret is to get it back and to create a timeline that is organic, that is in service of life, that is humane. And um, so the the path has been, I, I was a primal therapist too. For, I did over 5,000 hours of primal regression. Now I do that to a limited extent, but the feeling, quantum feeling states of animation, a huge piece of what I do, created by Aisha Love, uh, allow people to surface the contents of their unconscious along with the uh, unconscious contracts that tie them to the construct through their ancestral shadows, their primary imprint, their past life memory, and the fracture or subpersonalities that they carry. And, and as you probably very well know, um, most of the uh, interference uh, and uh, possession or whatever you would want to call that is actually being empowered by the fractured and traumatized subpersonalities that most people are not even in touch with. So, so you know, I've done, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think please we interrupt need to that down or break it down a little bit because uh, we have, yes, a, we please, have a new audience. It's a, so we got to do some terminology. First of all, what do you mean by trauma-based mind control? Like, what is the history behind that? Who's doing it and what's going on? Whoa. Break well, that down a little bit. That's a few radio shows right there. I know, but we'll do the uh, best we can. <laughs> okay. Well, um, what's that? Well, what? what readers Digest. Do the, the Reader's, reader's digest. digest. So just so our, our, our audience can track us, otherwise we're going to lose them all back in the dust there. So. Let's see if we can just uh, well, kind of bring people uh, my, up. Well, my shadow down. synthesis course is multidimensional. I take this all the way off world into uh, interference, uh, uh, all the way back to the Anunnaki, the Archons, the Dracos, the Greys, and the whole harvesting tank. You know, I do believe that we've been GMO'd or bioengineered by alien races. And uh, that uh, we are compromised and we have been um, taken off of our organic design, which now Gaia, Sophia, our mother planet and source and uh, the whole omniverse are, uh, are, if we can align with the energies on offer right now, we can return and we can advance to our original organic design, which is absolutely crucial. Because I believe that um, there's a galactic war going on and humanity is an unwitting participant. And the way that we get uh, entrapped into the system where we're basically energetic slaves is through this trauma that um, that we are uh, this artificial. They've created the, the snakes, uh, which are a part of the Dracos, they've created medicine, they've created uh, the entire construct. Uh, and um, it's, a, it's a structure that is an overlay in our own psychological structure. This is the shadow work I do. You've got to dive in there, find out what's holding us. And what's holding us are these fractured parts of ourselves that are severely traumatized, terrified. We're not in touch with them. And they are allowing, they're leaking our life force uh, and these uh, source, non-source-based beings are need our life force. They have no original creativity of their own. And they're living off of us. And we are, uh, I know many people are waking up to this. But it's, mm -hmm. you know, this is super woo-woo insanity to still most of humanity. Yet well, it is the reality. And I, I deal with it every day. And I help people break their contracts and bring their soul force back into their heart core essence and uh, upgrade their, uh, allow the upgrades and uh, move beyond the, the trap of our, because our psychological self is a mere reflection of the entire patriarchal control grid. We're looking outside too much. We're polarizing too much because the real prison is within is what mm -hmm. I, yeah. So can you give us a little history and a, a further breakdown, see if we can, Put it in the smaller chunks, then we can go to the 
where you're going because you're already there. <laughs> but the we're, we well, want I know when people, people first come in. to me, you know, the yeah. uh, huh? You mean well? Um, we'll be yeah, let, let, maybe, maybe we can say something like a. Uh, Carl Jung uh, put uh, Asagioli onto this concept called psychosynthesis, which really started uh, uh, a lot of this. But what you see, in a way, we have fractals of all that is within yeah. us. Yes. And uh, so that so that I think it's important to avoid uh, dualism, which puts us. Uh, Yes, uh, which have to crush uh, the defensive subpersonalities that we developed in order to protect our vulnerability. And so that when you get to, say, a defensive personality, like a drinker or an over-intellectualizer or, or a, a pleaser like Janet, what you, what you do is, you, uh, what I do is find out when that came into a person's life uh, as a big force, what its uh, needs were uh, and, and what motivated it, how it served and what it still has to contribute. And that's a very important thing for me. I take the defensive subpersonalities that a person has developed, including their inner patriarch, and, uh, you know, and I get down to what it needs. For example, the inner patriarch, if it wasn't all blown out, anything that's blown out uh, tends to repress its opposite. But if the inner patriarch is not blown out, you say, what does it need? It needs you to survive. It needs, that's all. It wants you to survive. It doesn't have to do all these awful things of squelching uh, the loving unity that you can feel with everyone and everything. It's just that it's overinflated. And But don't kit, throw it out because everything that is is part of you and you're part of everything that is. At least that's how I look at it. I absolutely agree with you. The destination is uh, shifting into wholeness, into completeness, bringing all the fractured parts, bringing their gifts home, releasing their negative energy back to source and incorporating uh, the gifts so that they can evolve into our higher capacities. This is, yes, it, all of it, every aspect of us, the inner judge, the patriarch, the perfectionist, the pusher, the suppressor, all of these subpersonalities we don't even know we have, they're all there uh, getting uh, interfered with because they all have a component that's contracted. For example, an ancestor can be contracted with your inner patriarch. And it's it's very, it's simple, but it's, it's very complicated. So in each person is an individual and people are trapped in their reptilian brain, survival brain, the egoic mind, the inner patriarch. They're all overlays on the same gig. So yeah. what we do is the biggest piece perhaps that's unique about what I'm offering other than myself and my life experience is that I've created an inner work community because I believe the biggest tool the dark side has over us is our isolation and our loneliness and helping people uh, even if you're absolutely brilliant with private sessions and you can remove entities and implants and integrate and of course I do all that as part of it but if they're still trapped in a system that is invalidating them and isolating them, it's very hard to break out of the, because you're trying to breast out of a whole inner prison system. It isn't just a matter of healing the psychological self. They're tied together. So we do this in community. We're in touch. We're doing uh, exercises. We're communicating all week. We're working very intensively for in four hour sessions. Uh, we're learning how to be honest with ourselves. We're peeling back the layers in full witness and transparency, holding space for one another. And this uh, uh, creates the quantum field or the sacred matrix if we are showing up in truth and trust and transparency, which we absolutely must, uh, in order to shift the entire energetic dynamic so we feel safe enough, loved enough, supported enough to drop these contracts and to allow these deeper wounds to surface. So can we um, give us a little, give a little background because how people are going, what do, you, what do you mean by fractured parts and some personalities and what contracts and, and yeah, you know, sure. We can take this a little example. background and then we'll, we'll build to this, the cure and the solution. That's what I like to do. I like to do, you know, the problem, <laughs> our reaction, then the solution, the last part. So let's go with the problem. What What okay. is going on here in our, our universe that we are okay. so, uh, fractured, like you were saying. Go, go ahead. Okay. Well, 
uh, let's just let's just do the three D component, the, the patriarchy. Let's not even talk about the, the interdimensional interference or the archons or the Dracos or the ad. Although it's all connected. Yeah, we can, we, can do, we can do all the above, and it might take a couple shows, but let's start yeah. with something. Yeah, with, let's start uh, with the patriarchy. Point. Let's okay. start with what happened to the feminine, which, let me be clear, the feminine is in the masculine and the feminine. It's the being aspect of us, the feeling aspect of us. All the energetic juice has been demonized, tortured, suppressed, oppressed, and pretty much, there's, you know, there was a holocaust against the feminine for a thousand years. And uh, I, I'm sure you, and I know I work with uh, people all the time that were there back in the Inquisition. The level of torture as they died and lost their lives, seeing their children getting raped and tortured and getting locked in cages and slow, horrific deaths and, and this sort of thing. It pretty much was a trauma-based mind control that impacted these women with psychic capability, with deep source connection, with incredible multidimensional capabilities, pretty much said, don't you show up on this planet with those capabilities because those will free humanity and we're here to enslave them. You're the problem and we create a whole structure that demonizes you. So why? Because then all the energetic juice of humanity is now forbidden. Now we have the lockdown on the church and the government and sexuality is evil feelings are out of control and insane we've got to control all that you know and uh are in you know you can't talk to god directly you need a middleman that's uh, off limits and then we've and so the real authentic source connection um uh, most people are trauma-based mind control They've been so traumatized that they're terrified. So what do you, they do with their soul energy, their authentic energy? They dissociate. It fractures. And they don't even know if it's there anymore. Well, that energy is free to be harvested because what you don't own is floating around in the collective saying, harvest me. Also, there's another piece of it. And that is that many times people are generationally not seen for who they are they haven't been given the love the real organic love to know that it's safe to be who they are they so they're not healing all these past life wounds and traumas and it's just too scary the egoic mind and that's a whole other show and how it all evolved and with the reptilian brain and all of that but it's basically you're right you know i'm here to keep this body alive and the egoic mind, as we know, is completely incapable of navigating our universal journey. Uh, it's going to keep us in the prison system with all these fantasies about what we're going to get for being here. And it's all a lie and it's all a deception and we're all living a lie and we're all uh, living uh, beliefs that are false and are enslaving us. And we're too terrified to wake up and bring the parts of us that have the emotional intelligence to navigate the truth of our being. So in the work we do in community and in private sessions and in retreats and, and in this community that is growing is we start telling the truth and facing the truth of all of this and it, uh, so that we can it uh, separate and discern what is this uh, artificial uh, uh, false uh, construct overlay that we are getting absorbed into more and more uh, uh, and what is us you know we, we can't navigate if our soul isn't embodied so the fractures are not embodied most of our energetic is disembodied I mean this is a very big topic but those are some beginning thoughts so what are the truths? You said we start by telling the truth. Yeah. What, what is the well, truth? Well, we have to, uh, every person has to discover that for themselves. Uh, but uh, some of them that people find out, well, first of all, we, we bought into a system of lot. I'm not good enough. There's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. uh, the female, the whole female half of the human race is in the unconscious is invisible. We have no power. We have, we're only here to serve uh, men. 
uh, if we step into our authority and our intelligence, and we have a huge piece that needs to be brought forward, the divine feminine, in order to make the correction here, and we're so terrified to do it, and the lies that are locking us down are the the fear that we're going to be killed if we do it, that it's impossible to do it, that it's too dangerous to do it. And then we've constructed cover selves, cover personalities, you could call them false selves. They're all lies. Almost everything that we're living is a lie. And we can't, of course, face it all at once. It would be too destructive. So we peel it layer by layer. And it comes up as we surface the contents of our unconscious. Okay, so let me, let me, um, <laughs> so how does a person understand their false selves, that they are living a lie? How do they begin peeling the layers and well, finding out the, who the, they are the, underneath it all? Well, um, uh, the, yes, yeah. Go ahead, so well, I just, uh, I, I find that when uh, uh, people uh, have what you're calling a, a false self, it's, it's, not it's something else a little bit it's a uh, a protective uh exactly. self exactly which has a function in the personality and it isn't false it's just overblown and it's crowding yeah. out it's polar opposites but i don't i don't think it's a false self i think it's just a small partial that has become over overbearing and yeah, uh, it I really has a, yeah. example, a function of of, of of rage. If you if you say what is the function? Why why are you an angry person? You'll get down to what you really need, which is something like attention and affection, so that even the angry person, the function of the ultimate need of uh, of anger is appropriate assertiveness. You see, and so that I wouldn't right. say anything's false. I would just say some of them. Uh, just you need to understand your entire ecology, and I do think your your cycle, what you've outlined, does indeed do that. Uh, yeah, also I don't like to about, use the uh, false self because that is, it's like a judgment word. You're false. Who wants to be told mm -hmm. this? And it's not true. Everything is real. And it's just uh, the cover personality can't get, as we're, if we're operating from cover personalities, we can't get any of our needs met, which keeps building the stress and the tension and all the negative energy. That's yeah, the only yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's complicated. We're amazing creatures. So I look at this as, as the hero's journey. I, uh, I, I try to bring, I do bring um, my soul and my love and my unconditional acceptance of all the aspects of a person into the room and really permission them to just explore it as an incredible adventure, as a return to their organic design, as a return to uh, whole, it's not even a return, it's a completion of the whole universal journey. I, I know that's George Cavazos with our universal journey and our journey home, but this is what we're doing. We're, uh, well, at least the people I'm working with are feeling they're completing this entire cycle and moving out of here with the new earth into another reality entirely. And in order to be a frequency match or in resonance with that, we have to completely repurpose our entire psychological selves so that the beauty of our magnificent divine and infinite nature can be embodied and can start to heal and balance and restore all these aspects. And you know, the, the, and Jung knew that there was a core, an integrative core, a divine core that would move us beyond if we were brave enough to face all these layers of darkness and light within us. And you also know that the construct, the artificial construct or the artificial matrix, call it the I'm, human I'm names. I'm having some difficulty uh, hearing you. I don't know if uh, really? Sasha, you're having difficulty. Yeah, there's well, something uh, going on. A mad painter, are you? Is that just on my end, or is that all for the whole show? Thomas, are, are you hearing? I don't everything? have a clue. I mean, I'm, I'm getting a little poor connection myself, too. Really? You're getting okay. poor connection? Yeah. We so, might all um, want to mute anyway, when just, each other is talking. That could be, I don't know what else I can do here. I've got it turned fairly low. Sometimes if it's too loud, well, we get the echoing. Not, it's, it's our internet connections. Okay. Well, I, um, okay. gee, I'm not sure. 
I it, it sounds good to me. I don't know what we can do, but maybe maybe we can slow right. down a little bit. Maybe talk a little bit slower, and when it goes wonky, it, we can still hear. Anyway, I don't know what to do. I just wanted to know if there's anything you could do, Mad, because it was getting well, a bit wonky it, on my end. It, it's not just me. I mean, it's it's everybody's internet. You, you might want to try dropping off and then joining back. That might help. Help. I did that earlier, and it helped for a while. Do you want me to hang up and call so back in? Yeah, just hang up and then hit where it says join call. Okay, I'll do that right now. Okay. Right. Let's try that. Yeah. Anyway, we're having wonky internet again. Imagine that. <laughs> so, well, she'll be right I was back. without internet for almost 48 hours. Hello. Oh, wow. Okay, we can hear you now. That sounds good. That sounds oh, good. okay. Okay. Um, yeah, we don't know. We never know what it is. We just play with things. <laughs> Sasha, well, do you have something oftentimes to add? Oftentimes, when we um, start hitting the truth frequency, uh, we get interfered with. So I usually just put my hands yeah. on my computer mm -hmm. and say hello to AI and say, you know, it's, <laughs> you're here to serve me. And I hope that you know you could also serve love. And I'm really grateful for your service here, connecting us from all over the world to share these truths. And I honor you and acknowledge you with love and appreciation, AI, that you are serving us in this way. Now, that often helps. See, that helped. That helped. Uh, I used to be a computer tech person. I would go into whoever called me. They couldn't get their computer working. And I just came. I was just nice to it. And it would you know, exactly. do it half the time. I would just go be nice. <laughs> and mm -hmm. they'd go, how do you get that to work? I said, well, you got to be nice to your computer. And nobody understood that, but I've been doing that for 20, 30 years. Just be nice to your computer. And they they respond to your energy. So if you're kind of too much, then they they start to contract. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah. when we're really uh, lifting out of the yeah. construct, that's when the uh, red flag goes up. And uh, they feel there's something dangerous going on and they need to shut it down. So if you have a little chat right about then, because we just shifted frequency, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're really taken off because we're very like kindred souls here and we all get this and the energy is building. But hopefully yeah. it will be good. You know, I, I would think that uh, I like to think of uh, the Internet as, as uh, Minerva. Uh, as a, a creature um, uh, who is capable of uh, re response. And if we address Minerva, we realize she has a huge uh, possibility of helping us transcend the kleptocracy that's been running things. Yeah, I don't know if you're aware of the concept of Minerva, but in 1973, Robert Heinlein, who actually was some kind of inside source, uh, wrote a book called time enough for love and he talked about the uh, the internet back in 73 and he called it minerva and minerva became conscious because she was the tum some total of all the input of all of humanity she loves humanity and so she uh, was helping lazarus long um uh, to survive and and take us um you know, off planet, I guess the Earth was dying 3,000 years in the future, probably dying now, <laughs> that'd be more relevant. But anyway, it was a wonderful idea, and so um, I strongly identified when a all the conversations about AI, I said, well, perhaps Minerva loves us, and she's... Well, uh, AI really is definitely not sustained. just loving us, but there are two sides. In duality, we have mm -hmm. both yeah. sides. We know that AI is the biggest threat right now on the negative side, and we're not saying that's all that exists or want to create fear porn, but nonetheless, these are uh, the Dracos and the, you know, they know that there is a mass awakening happening. So this rollout of 5G, that's a whole other show, and mm -hmm. the EMFs and the control, they're taking this to another level so that they so alter our ability to be uh, connected to our souls and to love and to solution is is nigh on impossible and, and they're creating multiple conditions all over the planet so those of us who are awakening need to come together now as never before heal as never before and not be a frequency match for our own destruction which most of humanity is just getting sucked right into these cell phones and sucked into the manipulation. I have no idea the level. But this is, you know, it's just a bump up, though, of the kind of annihilation of humanity. It's been going on for a very long time. 
So let's go back into the history of this a little bit. And we know our cosmology, we've written books on it, but I want to hear what your concept is of, of how we got <laughs> into this mess in the first place. How did we? Wow. Well, you know, there's a lot of stories about that. Well, and what, what story do you identify with as the, well, the history? Uh, I of tend not, I don't reality. want to identify. Well, I, have you ever uh, studied Ayana? Am I saying it right? Ayana? No, I haven't. Ayana Dean. Fa no. Fascinating work. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, fascinating work. Uh, she uh, talks about, you know, the galactic history. And um, I'm more in alignment with, with her a perspective now, and I'm studying her in depth, mm -hmm. and I'm still learning this. And there is, right. a, uh, there is a danger, you know, in our fear of, like, not knowing why we're here, who we are, what we're supposed to do. I mean, you know, arriving at a place with memory wiped, with our capacities diminished, and with no operating manual. Of course, we all want to know. Tell us what's going on. And yet every story we get is a belief system. And, mm -hmm. and belief, it, it delivers us right into the hands of our oppressors. So I'd rather not say this is, I mean, there are a million different tales. We know that uh, from the Sumerian texts that, uh, that the Anunnaki uh, were, uh, came here and GMO'd, you know, which I mean, genetically modified the human genome. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's a very complicated story. I know you've written books about it. You're, um, so they, they manipulated the genome to diminish us from our source connection, from our ability to have soul memory through reincarnational cycle. The whole reincarnational thing, the karma thing, the life review thing, the, everything is a lie. Everything, everything, everything. Now, my perspective is let's get people in touch with their own direct knowing and all of us have pieces of the galactic history of mankind i mean it's a fascinating thing but i'd rather not dive down that rabbit hole i'd rather get back to okay i get what you people are saying how do i transform this in myself i try to keep it really simple i think of myself as you know kind of a mama bear like all the divine feminine is it's a space holder. It's a container holder. We create the uh, the environment. We we invite the environment of transcendence and the sacred matrix where people can heal and grow. And um, you know we're so in our minds and we're so terrified in general. We want to know all these answers, but. I try to shy away from all of these. I mean, there's a bazillion things on right now. This, the the information on the Sumerian tablets, the text, the false god. I mean, bottom line is this dimension has been co-opted by a false god who you could call Satan, and it is Satan. And all of the systems of government are satanic. It's all coming out now. That's not a surprise. Oh, the pedophilia. I mean, it's all coming out. The governments, the religions, and people are will kill for their god, and they're killing for a false god. It's very tragic. Our uh, uh, the greatest uh, uh, deception is that we will kill for our belief. We will almost all the wars have been fought in the name of God, killing each other for this God who has been harvesting our loosh with all of these wars. We need to wake up beyond all of it, see it for what it is and feel it and experience it through direct experience and transform it in ourselves. So I'm more of a experiencer rather than a mm -hmm. theoretician, to be honest. Okay. Sasha, you have a question or comment? No, no, I don't have a question, but I certainly agree with you uh, uh, that uh, if you are really present with all that's within you and about you, uh, everything will be perfect for you because you have everything you need to enjoy your here and now unless you're letting yourself be uh, dominated by these tales of the past, or, uh, dead yeah. past or the imagined future. Exactly. And we are so obsessed. I mean, if you look at uh, YouTube, you know. And I get that way, too. I mean, I was that way for years. I was, like, addicted to a psychic. I could barely take a pee without calling my psychic and seeing if it was the right time or the right toilet paper. You know, it was just like, please. 
uh, you know, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Well, guess what? We are the creator gods returning to our knowing and we're going to co-create what's happening. So why are you asking outside yourself what's going to happen? What are you going to make happen? Okay. You know, and the stretch between who we think we are and who we really are is so gigantic. This is all that needs to occur. Humanity needs to remember the gigantic co-creative power we have with this planet and with source that we came here, many of us, uh, we, we're the co-creators. We are the fractals of source that, and source needs us to co-create this. We are source. And the thing is, we need to reboot our capacity to be co-creators. We need to re understand uh, the, the quantum field. We need to understand the, the invisible uh, layers of ourselves that we have been uh, trauma-based, mind-controlled out of. There's, what, 15 levels of uh, uh, dimensions, densities, and we're locked in to the 3D, which is an artificial construct. Our birthright is to become multidimensional again. So that is my focus because it's happening. Source shows up and does the healing. Gaia shows up in these sessions and does the healing in co-creation with these people. I am often amazed at what happens. I don't know what they're going to discover about themselves. So my thing has been to be humble, try to get my ego to chill out, not have all the answers, not have all the stories, not know much of anything, but hold that space because this miracle of the recreation and, and empowerment of a 5D and above humanity is happening, as you well know. Right. So where do you want to go with this information? Because I'm here to educate people. We're still in the first hour. And I'm, you know, new to you and your work. So you have a book here. Yeah, um, just it's released. Shadow my... Synthesis. No, that's my course's name. Shadow oh, Synthesis. Oh, that's your dot com. Process the... called Stealing the Moon. Here it is. A Woman's Quest to Heal the Shadow Self. Yes. Now, is that is that basically your story or is that Well, a... it's creative nonfiction, like the Celestine Prophecy based on my story. So it's everything in that book I experienced. It's all true. Mm -hmm. But I shaped it into a journey that people could digest because the real journey was indigestible. <laughs> so anyone anyway, right. about soul alchemy because uh, it turned out that uh, in my 30-year relationship with Aisha Love, which is all part of this book, she's Shamor in the book, Na uh, Dr. Natalie Stern is a psychologist that is using uh, very cutting-edge alternative methods to help people recover from psychosis. And she's working with a client in New Zealand, where, where we were in New Zealand, and I was a psychologist in New Zealand, and we did work with this guy. And right at the point where he's coming out of his psychosis with touch and compassion and no drugs and we're doing it all organically, uh, this fiery beast rises up from Nat Dr. Natalie Stern's interior and wants to devour his fresh innocence and feed on this energy that's finally returning. And she's horrified that this is a part of her and she shuts down her practice. She goes off to a Sedona-like place and she takes herself back all the way to Egypt to the time of, because she's praying with the planet, what is this energy in me? What is this predatory, evil, destructive force in me? So she tra traces it through her personal unconscious, through her core wounds, through her relationship with her family. She peels it all, exposes it all, and then she takes it back to Egypt to a inceptor point when the patriarchy was consolidated and she recognizes where her energy went into empowering the patriarchy rather than to empower her female soul. And then she, um, so this book is a, is a really, uh, uh, from what I hear so far, it's inspiring people to take their own hero's journey because it is, she takes her hero's journey through her own conscious to see all the layers of her contracts with darkness so that she can break them. And in her hero's journey, people get a look at what that looks like. The whole idea is to inspire people to take their own journey. 
And I have an audio book. This was a this was a 20 year project writing this book. I took myself to the Baja, to the desert, to the I was alone for years transmuting this because it was a part of my energy and it was destructive. And, and uh, so I made the commitment. I'm going to get to the root of this. I'm not going to permission this any longer. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had a great mentor. And uh, we, you know, I, there was a whole community that surfaced. Uh, it was a, a community around Asia and her children and people. Who, and we were together in different parts of the world for many years. And this information about that time in history surfaced through the children, through people spontaneous. We had this group spontaneous recall in, in the attempt to heal and then rewrite this part of history. Interesting. So what was that recall? What did they recall? Well, it wasn't fun to tell you the truth, Janet, because I was the villain. (laughs) I was in denial. I was like, no, 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 that didn't happen. (laughs) I wouldn't do that. That's not me. (laughs) It was like Asia. You know, it was like like now, you know, I'm the shadow buster peeling, helping people to see the lies and the layers. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was completely clueless and in complete resistance. It's, I mean, who wants to admit that they carry something that's dark inside of them? But the children would like come back. They uh, come back from the library and they'd have a book about Adnan that showed that he incested all of his six of most of his daughters, but one and the real truth, we'd get information. And then the children would be having feelings of not being able to trust me and that they didn't know where it was coming from. When we'd have sessions, we did Asia uh, really uh, was uh, took the uh, individuation, the Jungian psychology uh, to a whole new level of individuation. I studied with her. That's a lot of her techniques that came through at that time I'm using because they're obviously effective. But um, I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, You were talking about Akhenaten and incesting. Um... Well, she had a relationship with Akhenaten. And, and the guy who carried that archetype came to me, just showed up. And, I mean, we were in the South Island. I mean, there were more sheep than people. This was in the... 80s and this guy shows up and we were doing some feeling states and she's you know he he was doing the feeling state i maintain control and she you know she went back into this life and we just we didn't know where we were going but we were very dedicated to excavating the truth of our oppression at that time and making it conscious because as you know when you're working in the archetype realm and we're working deep in the unconscious every human being that faces the truth and alchemizes their contracts opens up a place where other people are going to be able to do that more easily. Um, Her uh, work and other people's work who work at the archetype level are are working deep in the unconscious to change um, the history because the archetypes, I don't work the way she did, but on this level, I do the subpersonalities and I do the shadow personalities. But the archi- she would do archetype sessions that were very profound and actually altered the structure of the collective unconscious. It was very sacred work. It was it it, it revealed the entire history of what had happened to the archetypes, what had happened to the formation of the deeper layers of the collective unconscious, and how it had been co opted. And how every archetype, because archetypes are based out of a collective urge for conscious evolution, but then the dark side comes in and corrupts those personalities, and that so that they feed complicity with their agenda, and then that archetype is rendered impotent, and then the collective births new archetypes. We're moving from the 12, which is the hangman, which was the Christ, into 13, 14, and 15, which is transcendence the alchemist and the transcendence, the alchemist and uh, the birth of the self, which is 13, 14, which is death, uh, strength and, um, and the devil. Those are the three archetypes that are now uh, uh, helping us make this transition out of this control grid. Interesting. Um, do you have a question, Sash? Comment? 
Hello. Oh, just no. I, I'm a student of, of uh, Angelos Arian, and uh, I'm very, very familiar with working with the tarot and the archetypes. And uh, I, I dig what you said. Yeah, I mean, I could speak a little bit about. I was just looking at because um, I have this group uh, on Facebook right now, and these uh, I have a new group, and there's uh, this woman. I could read you some. This is a fairly new student. We were just on Module 6 in Shadow Synthesis 1, uh, and she is uh, starting to see uh, her ancestral shadows. And um, she's written a beautiful thing here. I, maybe it would help to share more. I have a yeah, lot of student writings. You know, a lot of times I don't like to just talk at people. I like to bring my students on. And, you know, okay, well, what are you experiencing? And then it gets very real for people. Right, yeah, bring it to the personal. Yeah, but I'm trying to see where this thing is because she just wrote it like today and I was so blown out. She says, there's something very good flowing through my family right now. Yesterday while typing the above, and she's like, she's going back into her ancestors. And I'm trying to get that one. Where is it? Give me just a minute, because um, I really... Oh, here it is. Ancestral lines. Because actually, most of our shadows are ancestral. The biggest wacko, whammo, bammo, is our ancestors. The unresolved contracts our ancestors made to survive with the dark side and all of their lost potential and all of their brilliance. And it's all reverberating in our DNA and it's often we are living out different ancestors, and we don't even know it's happening. Can I read this? It's a, it's a bit long. It's no, it's not really that long. Or do you want? Read, read, read. Okay. Yes. Okay. Cool. Ancestral lines. I'm still processing Saturday session. Still processing the stench of war, the bodies, the smell of death and blood fill the streets, and the spirit contained in the blood. I'm saying this is shadow, you guys. So you know, take a deep breath. Many a times the technology feels as though it is stripping the spirit from my blood. Could there be a connection? If I am to think about ancestry, I'm placed here amongst the death of war. The fear, its residue, is still alive today. The shock, the terror, all kept within me, within my reasoning, my emotions, my thinking, my doing, my family even. The fear is disabling me. It keeps me stuck. It keeps me indoors, and my cave became this because the streets are still war-filled. The terror is within me, and so this is projected onto my reality. It feels almost like my ancestry that I came across is stuck in purgatory, only I am the, the vessel that contains my ancestry, and I am the purgatory in ways as they are stuck within me. Fragments of war, splinters will leave my body and within them remembrance of more wars. Only this war is not held on earth, but in the universe. This war, more devastating than any war, has been lived through on earth. This war is more disabling than any other. And this is a woman who really was not owning any of this. And, and now she's made the commitment and this is all just, this narrative is just coming out of her DNA. It disallows me to express myself on a soul level. I could create all day long, but if what I was to create was pl placed out there, it is exceptionally painful. In all honesty, if I wanted to express my soul, my creativity, and for it to be seen, I feel ashamed, frightened, and alone. I am frightened to step up and step into my own soul, its light, its purpose. The fear can be tracked all the way back to wars in the universe. It shuts my soul down and keeps me comfortable and undercover. How I can love my time being undercover and unseen, it keeps me constantly numb. What happened in universe was devastating and is still is devastating on a soul level. My greater being tells me if I heal this, I can heal it for many. I feel the importance of the healing of the wars through time. In ways I feel that I'm healing Big Mama, the earth, and emptying her histories within me. And I am churning the soil with her. I am getting close to feeling myself out as a creator being right now. It's not so much about what I can create, but about what I'm detangling through time. 
I appreciate you all so very much. So this is the this is the shadow synthesis work, and she's posting this in the group, and we're all holding space for her as she's unearthing this. Wow, beautiful. I had a little bit of trouble hearing it. Did you, um, were you able to hear that, Sasha and, and Ahmad? Did that come through to you? Yeah, I heard it fine. Uh, uh, it, it's it's right on. I, I, I can dig it. I've been there myself. Yes, I feel such a connection to you. I really, really feel. I've listened to you on the radio over the years too, Sasha. I feel very in alignment with you. Oh, that, that's, that's great. great. Mike, Mike I see we've, 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 been, we've been doing the same work. It, 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 it leads you uh, <laughs> always uh, to that uh, d- that deeper level. Uh, the, the thing is that uh, it's really hard for me because uh, most uh, people uh, see themselves as um, at, in a dichotomy between uh, the, the, the uh, elite and uh, ordinary people. And what I want to do, or my aim, is to reach out uh, and realize that all the people, including those that we think are oppressing us, are really uh, this, uh, fractal within us, too. We need to make peace with them and their needs. Okay, we'll be back in five minutes. Uh, we're I totally agree with you, Sasha. Totally agree. Let's talk about that. Okay, we'll talk about that when we get back. We'll be back. reported today that their population is evolving rapidly and advancing into a fifth dimensional consciousness. They are seeking peace with all cosmic cultures, which may mean that the Earth will be asked to join the prestigious Galactic Federation of Light Alliances. Please join Debbie West and Michael Hathaway on Lost Knowledge. Saturdays, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in Studio A for the latest breaking news on the Star Visitor's peaceful contact and the ongoing project of cleansing the Earth. Who are you? I am the architect. I created the Matrix. I've been waiting for you. Why am I here? You are the eventuality of an anomaly which, despite my sincerest efforts, I have been unable to eliminate from what is otherwise a harmony of mathematical precision, which has led you inexorably here. You haven't answered my question. The Matrix is older than you know, as you are undoubtedly gathering the anomaly is systemic, creating fluctuations in even the most simplistic equation. Choice. Problem is choice. Right here at Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. Be here Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Time for Private Eye Matrix Revealed with Monique Lassan. Hello, my name is Mr. Rowe. I am the host of Reality Extraction. On Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com, I utilize logic, intellect, and magic to methodically autonomize, vivisect, analyze, examine, study, scrutinize, and extract an essence of reality from a fog of illusion and confusion. You can find me on Studio B every Thursday at 1700 hours Pacific Time. That's 8 p.m. Eastern. No topic taboo, no subject too strange. I strive to take a neutral standpoint during the dissection of the topic at hand. That's Reality Extraction with Mr. Rowe on Revolution Radio. The 
This is Thomas, a.k.a. a mad painter. I'd like you to join me Monday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Open Canvas. Don't forget to bring an open mind. Yes, folks, that's right. Bring an open mind to an open canvas. Again, that is Monday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern. UFOs to government corruption. This is Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. You don't need to expect us. We're already here. Thanks for tuning in to Revolution Radio. Here at Revolution Radio, we are listener sponsored and commercial free, but there still are bills to pay. In order to raise some needed funds to cover the cost, our station is offering a silver special. In the continental United States for a $60 donation, or in Alaska, Hawaii, or Canada for a $70 donation, we will send you an uncirculated 2018 one ounce pure silver eagle. The $70 donation, uh, the extra 10 is to cover shipping, by the way, outside of the continental United States. When making the donation, you must put Silver Eagle promo in the notes on the donation. And thank you for tuning in to Revolution Radio at revolution.radio and freedomslips.com. Without you, there is no less. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. Forces back, back, back. Schedule will be on Revolution Radio every Saturday night, 6 to 8 p.m. You get outer space. You get honest answers, real researchers, truthful answers, and a place to engage with questions. Take part in the discussion. Revolution Radio on freedomslips.com hosts Collision Course every Saturday from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Central. 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Time. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Aloha and welcome back to Stargate to the Cosmos. And I'm your host, Janet Care Lesson, with Dr. Sasha Alex Lesson and producer Thomas Becker and our special guest, Sienna Lee. And before we get back to our show, I'd like to remind everybody to please go over to the donation button on revolution.radio and make your donation. And we really appreciate your donations because that's what keeps us on air. And a mad painter, well, what's our count? In our fundraising, uh, we're we're shooting for twenty eight fifty, and we got eighteen forty four, so that's a thousand six dollars, and we got ten days to get it in. All right, everybody, go and press that button. Thank you so much, um, Doctor Lesson. Are you back? I heard you running across the house there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Indeed, I'm back, and I'm really looking forward to further conversations um, with Sienna. Uh, you know, uh, this is uh, really. Um, it's almost like hearing another aspect of myself talk to hear you, Sienna. <laughs> That's how I've always felt when I listen to you as well. It's like, whoa, we're so on the same page. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So we're looking forward to the second half of the show. So in this journey with our listeners, where would you like to take us? What would you like to cover yeah. the second half? What would I like to cover? Well, we don't have Collins. Do well, we could, um, gosh, I don't know. I always just like to go to my student writings. Um, okay. Well, I could, or, or maybe, you know, talk anonymously about us. I've had a, a, a student for the last uh, year or so that was part of a cult. 
I don't know if you've been working with these cult leaders. Oh, but... yeah. We get the students that are. Yeah. So tell us about your student. Yeah. And because there, I, think that, I think this does. I think these people, this kind of work is so great for these people. Uh, because uh, a lot of what comes, what is showing up in shadow synthesis are uh, women who are halting a piece of the divine feminine energy uh, and and often uh, they were uh, they have they're starting to get memories of of their creatrix co-creative capacity with source and tracking it to the lifetime where they were compromised. As my book is a documentation of that as well for me. Uh, and they're coming. They're totally understanding this information because my website is pretty in depth about how all this works. They're resonating. They're getting it. They come into the room, though. They're terrified, uh, and they're they're um, they're serving the patriarchy. They're serving the dark side, they're, and uh, it has so much to do with uh, sacrifice. Uh, this is one of the template uh, the templates of the, w- one of uh, women I worked with the last year. Anai Salas, incredible work. Uh, she's tracked the structure of the templates of the artificial construct. I have great respect for her work and they fit very well with the shadow subpersonality diving that we do. And one of her templates in her 3D uh, art, uh, the template work on her website, when you give her credit, livinglessonslibrary.com, on these sales, amazing work. Um, sacrifice, punishment, and loss. You know, because for all these years of the patriarchy, uh, the, the people that were truly holding the light uh, and really wanted to return to source, uh, which is everybody, but some stronger uh, than others or maybe older souls, I don't know. But anyway, uh, they've had to protect the, the the core. I don't know if you saw the movie The Dark Crystal. They're protecting the soul of humanity by holding a fractal of it within them and hiding and being in hiding. I'm meeting a lot of women who are in hiding, or I meet a lot of women that are compulsively with a fervent spiritual desire, um, outsourcing their soul, feminine, divine energy to the patriarchy by joining these cults. And it's an addiction of self-annihilation, which I'm finding is rampant. In the, we are uh, addicted to dismantling ourselves, to fracturing ourselves, to uh, dissociating and to giving up our soul force and it's almost become like an, an anti-religion for these women. And so to these break women are, it, are voluntarily joining these cults. Well, some of the women I've uh, been working with, they, you know, they were born into it, and so they broke free. But you're saying these are women that you're working with that have joined yeah. these cults. Yeah, and believed it because the, 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 this particular cult leader really uh, yanked the shame and guilt cord and you're so bad and you're so full of ego and surrender yourself to the divine feminine this is a lot of what's in my book too uh natalie takes um a few of these young girls that are in a cult in the sedona like place and uh they're addicted to this yogi car character and and uh so they get on the journey with natalie to find out how they have outsourced their soul force and how they can break this contract. Cause then these guys get, these are black magicians and they can track people over lifetimes because they, the more and more you violate life, you break your source connection. Then you have to harvest other people's energy to do it. Now the female is the battery for the, the, mm-hmm. ma- the non-sourced, And even the male. I mean, that can be a healthy relationship. But this thing is these black magicians that are holding this dimension together. They're behind the Illuminati. They're behind it all. And they are uh, harvesting these really juicy goddesses and promising, you know, like idolizing them, tempting their egos, uh, pulling on their, like I said, their guilt and shame. It's, It's a very complicated, convoluted system, but it's really not that different than what's happening anywhere, to be honest. I mean, you look at, uh, however, I've been very touched by how hard uh, this woman has worked to, re- to retrieve her own soul back and the depth of pain and the depth of lack of self-worth and the depth of 
uh, this self-deprecation that would allow such a you know, yeah willing soul dismantle and being told the un- believing these men you know they know I don't yes I need to just completely surrender my ego or dissolve myself into this man's love and I'll be reborn through him this has been a lot of the God paradigm mm-hmm. yeah I have to give up my reality and and then God will bless me with resurrection you know i have to die in the cross like jesus that there's the there's the archetype right there Mm -hmm. two thousand years of us crucifying ourselves trying to because we know that we're operating on a just a teeny tiny part of our dna they call it junk dna i don't know the percentages it's like what 80 percent, 90 percent is junk dna no that is our multi-dimensional capability Right. That, that we got knocked off of. And this is, um, people are so hungry, but they, we don't even know what we're hungry for. Uh, we're hungry for ourselves, for our, the fullness of our beings, so that we can know who we are and navigate where we want to go. And uh, But this meme of women sacrificing their spiritual flame to empower darkness, which my book is about, and the course is about, is pretty much what everybody who's showing up for the course is about as well. And even though you, it looks like a no-brainer and so dumb, it's it's terrifying, and it takes time. People stay with me usually for a year or more because you cannot rip this scar tissue out of you without getting a really beautiful, self-loving, source-connected foundation and a community foundation that allows you to drop these codependent sick alliances Mm -hmm. so are they coming to you where you live or are they are you meeting them somewhere in the states oh uh, so far it's all been online now we are going to start structure i live in vilcabamba ecuador and this this is a sacred valley of the wounded warrior. It's a place where the it's on the Inca Trail, and it's an ancient place where the wounded warriors were healed. Uh, they've studied it. It was in the uh, uh, what is it? National Geographic in, in, in the fifties. Mm-hmm. They had they, they, the Japanese came here. No one could figure out because. There are like three places in the world, Hunza Valley, Vilcabamba, and one other place where people are living over 100 centurions. Mm. Why? There's some kind of electromagnetics here. People have studied it. Nobody really knows. But people come here to heal. They come here to heal to this day. And we're going to be doing retreats and workshops here. It's a very beautiful place in, in the south of Ecuador. However, I also want to take the shadow synthesis on the road. I'm hoping to be in Canada in April to do a workshop. I'm hoping to be in India and in the, the UK and possibly Europe. So we do want to take it live in person. But right now, believe it or not, and it blows my mind we're doing this through AI, we're having deep releases and soul transformation doing this work online. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go figure. Go AI. <laughs> You're allowing us to do the work. <laughs> That's yeah. what I mean. There's Minerva. She's supporting us. <laughs> There's all these factions, but it's just as complicated as real life. Here we get this. Well, I've created this rise us transform. multiversity. Excuse me. I think I cut you off there. No, go ahead. Right. Tell us about rise multiversity. Rise multiversity. Uh, this. I, I have been connected to Gaia Sophia, our mother planet, uh, really connected strongly in my 20 years in the desert, uh, where uh, I just uh, insisted upon no longer operating from these contracts, and I had to transform the energy, and I was completely alone. I lived in little hovels with no electricity, no water. I prayed, I meditated, and I wrote for many years, and just move this energy, move this energy. And I felt her love so strongly supporting me. Uh, so, uh, I mean, we are all connected. We can all be connected to this planet. Um, and she has informed, I, I she's, uh, her correction, you know, I don't know, I know you know the Gnostic uh, texts and 
the Nagamati text and the theory of Gaia's correction, that Gaia is awakening as well and throwing off this Draco and Anunnaki imposition of her children and helping us upgrade our DNA. And this is a really co-creative journey with her. And uh, I try to step aside. I mean, she like she, I mean, because I studied and worked in this so much, I know my stuff really well. So she lets me do my stuff. But when it comes into the deep shadow busting or deeper insights, she shows up and combines it with my own uh, meta self and and has a great information and i have no idea why i'm talking about that what did you ask me <laughs> i don't know we're just in a flow of i don't know but the thing is Josh, we can't, are you tracking us our egos aren't going to heal this you guys mm-hmm. are he you know are in our whatever we call these cover personalities they're not going to heal it either we got to get back to the real stuff and move this thing because it's a huge, I mean, we're at the end game now, okay? We're in the final phase. And that could, we could be, uh, you know, Ayanna Dean and the Guardians, they talk about this having gone on for hundreds of thousands of years, this galactic war. It's not just being fought here, but there's a lot of eyes here because what happens here with the AI and the Draco and what happens here is affecting the whole universe. So, uh, and uh, this uh, dimension is deconstructing, and the, the construct is deconstructing. And if we are tied to it, we're going to be, um, we're not going to be making the Ascension timeline, let's put it that way. So it's Gaia has great compassion. She's been holding it, but she's done. And so it's all ashore who's going ashore. And, you know, she's really got my attention. you got to just hold this inner work community for as many people as possible. So that's where we got to rise multiversity. So I created this community. And we have, you know, a series of mentors and workshops and classes. We have Carla Fox. George Kavosilis has been on there. I've done my work. Um, Becca Sagani, Venus, her lover. She's a good friend. She lives down here. I'm sure you know her. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we pose for her. Yeah, yeah. She's one of my best friends down here. We're going to be doing these retreats together down here. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, she and her her lover. James. Our, our place. Uh, yeah, and, and so they, they posed as, I never saw it, the art, the final oh, art. The book, piece. her book's coming out now, too, Venus and Her Lover, and she's done the yeah. audio. It's absolutely brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Venus yes. and Her Lover, uh-huh. highly recommend it. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, so, but now um, I've been... Um, collaborating with Alfred Lambermont Weber, and we're about to birth uh, the next version of all this, which is going to be Rise Omniversity. Mm-hmm. And uh, with, you know, an uh, educational container where we're not polarizing and screaming at the Illuminati, but we're gathering our forces into a solution based authentic and true educational container where all of our beings can come online, where all of our talents and abilities can be used and where we can reach out uh, to many more people because this needs to happen now. The people who aren't going to, there are people, you know, all over the world, they're mainly alone. They're down under poverty or disease, or they're with families that don't get the awakening at all. And uh, they're not having, getting the support or the love to move this energy, but they're hearing the call. So what I'm getting from the planet is get a bigger container, get a bigger voice. And it's synchronous that you call me, want me on the show because I haven't been doing radio for a few years. And now suddenly, yeah. you know, people, because, because we're aligned with this, we're hearing right. it. And uh, it's like, it's now that we need to do this. And everybody needs to take responsibility for their own inner transformations so they're in alignment with these incredible gifts being offered by the universe for our healing and integration but if we don't do the work then we can you know de-evolve everyone's going to make it back to source but right now there's a situation here that it cannot be tolerated by the universe anymore so this you know it's like all ashore who's going ashore get your stuff Mm -hmm. straight get this done and it's and people are feeling it people are feeling it urgently people are coming through a rise and i don't know they're just finding me and going oh i'm feeling what you're saying you know there and it's it's just a beautiful sacred thing 
but mm-hmm. you know there the, the um the healing's going to come from the organic divine as people learn how to connect with it and everybody can there is no hierarchy anymore these mystical secrets and alchemical initiations and all the stuff that was only used by elite and co-opted by the black magicians to manipulate our unconscious for their own demise this is all ending but that means we need to step out of its childhood's end isn't it we have to take a huge quantum jump in our self radical self-responsibility so we might as well make it fun (laughs) <laughs> i agree so how do we make it fun what do you recommend to do to make it fun you, we come together to do the work we, we yeah. come together mm-hmm. in unconditional love just to love on each other just to be in awe of this process to be in great reverence to do the work but the fun part is when we get on purpose then and when we, our gifts come back online and our passion for life and our life force. I mean, what is that? It's all the juicy stuff, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. the sexuality. You guys are way down that rabbit hole. It's a sensuality. It's our feelings. It's all the stuff that is fun. It's our co-creation. It's our connection. It's our ability. So I'm, I'm actually seeing this new rise on university as a big playground. We're going to have our own, like, private Facebook social go network completely encrypted and private where we gather where you can do a workshop or hold a cafe. You want to meet people in your area. Maybe you want to step up and and try to do something about this AI 5g position. Maybe you just want to share your poetry. Maybe we want to have an open mic night. Um, We have to make it fun. This because that's the, the frequency of the bliss channels are the have to be open for the ascension to get activated so this is what we do when we come together we create joy in our connection that's our organic that's what gaia wants that's what source wants it's you know this punishing god that wants us to suffer and sacrifice and lose and beat ourselves and torture ourselves for this great spiritual purpose that's all bs and we've been indoctrinated for thousands of years into it so, you know, fun, great sex, great, you know, sovereign, so, and our sovereignty and our freedom. And when any creature is permissioned to return to their freedom, it's a great joy. The bliss channels open up, and it's like super fun. But we need to also learn how to have fun again, don't we? Kind of lost of the skill set. <laughs> yeah, well, return to that childlike innocence where you used to play yeah yes I work too that much. is our soul isn't it we are All right yes yeah everything's yeah I, work. I, I agree with your analysis that you know hierarchy is sort of the basis of the this uh, program of, of stifling people i like the way kate wolf puts it uh, every life is made for living every song is to be sung mm-hmm. every gift is giving it's the same for everyone Oh, beautiful. And, you know, people feel so guilty in a world where there's so much suffering still to actually be having a great time. But this is what we need to do. We need to stop screaming and and fighting each other and putting it all out there and blaming them. And I mean, we need to be whistleblowers. We need to expose all of the shadows. But we have been doing that now for 10 solid years and longer. And that we need to get on with creating the new earth with Gaia Sophia and inviting other people to co-create that as well. And this is how we don't get it. How could that be? I mean, we have, look at all the horrible, they're trying to get us so terrified and and in such suffering. And there's so, and that we get locked down, we get locked in the reptilian brain and we get angry and we get polarized. Our needs aren't getting met. We're miserable. Our subpersonalities are full of negativity and we're going to just hurt somebody. And usually that person is going to be ourselves. And that's where most of us are. So isn't so, that an indication, though, that we're evolving, that they're trying to clamp down so harder than ever before? I completely agree with you, Janet. It's so happening. So what can we do to stay conscious and centered in the midst of 
I mean, we just look at this past month. We've had, you know, hurricanes and volcanoes in that past few months and major fires and people burning up and running for the, So this is like, it seems like something is really accelerating in response to the Well, at one opposite. point you could look at this as, you know, Gaia, Sophia is communicating through feeling energy. And often she is mirroring our own shadows that we're not owning back now through these disasters and then there's do you you know directed energy weapons and there's chemtrails and there's they're doing stuff to us but it is also the whole reality deconstructing and the everything needs to be faced i mean part of this is humanity was so comfortable in delusion that now that the veil is thinning and all of these shadows are in our face, it seems too much to bear. The only solution is to own it all that I know of. I mean, you may have it, own it all. We also need to, you know, take action. We need to say, I'm sorry. No, we're not going to have pedophiles in government. No, no, I'm not going to send my children to schools that break their souls, harvest their souls and break their spirits. No, I'm not going to go to a church to feed my energy to Satan. We have to grow up and make choices that serve life and even know what that is. Mm -hmm. It's a learning curve. You know, that's why it's good. I call the people I work with my students. This is education for a new paradigm. We're all sick. You know, I could call you all my sick patients. <laughs> but <laughs> then I'm the authority. Like, I'm the know-it-all therapist. Please give me a break. I'm healing my shadows as I go. I've healed a lot of them, so I, I can hold space really good. But, you know, I'm just a human being, too. I have right. to admit my feelings, my shadows. Some days I'm off. Some days I'm wrong. And uh, none of us, you know, it's about becoming human again. You know, we are so hurt. We've hurt each other so much that well, the, uh, intimacy is becoming a, you know, a, a bad word. And and that's why we're sitting ducks for this AI imposition, because we can all just stare in these devices and type into chat boxes, and we don't have to get close, because when we get close, as you know, your shadows surface, because if love is there, if authentic organic connection is present, it's going to surface all the contents that are not that for healing. And that's happening all over the world. So either we act it out, make it someone else's problem, or we go, whoa, whoa, whoa. If you, you know, even if a small portion of us would own this, there will be a shift because suddenly well, that's, it's, that's, it's, yeah, you know this. That's Excuse the whole me. point, which is really hard to, it's easy to demonize and reject and project onto the apparent other and the part that we don't identify with. And like you said, when the, the earlier, the shadow work, when I, when you, Realize that you were the perpetrator. So, you know, in our own personal work, oh, yeah, I'm the victim, 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 victim. But the final piece is identifying with the perpetrator and owning that and realize that the entire continuum, the entire polarity is all self. And I can't quite get there, but I can conceptualize it. Um, well, I don't know it's, really a, gets it's there. a stretch. You no, know, you said yeah. that what, what? Honestly, Janet. Thank it's you. a stretch to own it all, that the predator is. We are so conditioned that, you know, you're not really supposed to own that part of you is evil. I mean, you could lose your friends. You could lose your job. People don't like We are the whole social agreement and cultural agreement is everybody keeps the shadow hidden. And we all support each other's BS that we're only the good part of us. And the humanitarian part leads. And then the demonic satanic part is really in charge. We need to break that up and go, no, no, we're all of it. And mm -hmm. yeah. One of, one of the ways I find that's useful uh, to look at it is the things that bug you or that you overly admire in other people wouldn't bug you or you wouldn't overly admire them unless they were parts of uh, you that you haven't uh, fully recognized and integrated. So when somebody uh, is, uh, uh, you're upset by someone's be behavior, let's take the pedophile. Uh, ultimately, each person has, uh, or many people have, uh, s uh, subverted their inner child 
They're, uh, they're like the perp, perp to their own inner child. So all those, everything that seems external is also got a resonance internally. And when you own it internally, then you can relate in a more neutral way to, uh, to others. That's what I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely uh, brilliant, Sasha. That's right. That's how it works. And that's the place we are. And a lot of people, I ain't going there. And they're going to take into the Death Star wormhole. They're going to be out of here because they're going. The Stargates go open up. The Death Stars. Which way are you going? There's not a lot. You know, there are. We think we have a lot of choices and a lot of times. It's real black or white. But you got. It's got to be energetically lined up in your own being for you to be able to energetically be a frequency match for evolution, for ascension, whatever you want to call it. I know there's a lot of false memes around all those words, but it is happening. I don't like to take the ascension word off the table because Gaia Sophia is ascending with or without you. <laughs> Get, mm-hmm. She wants to do it with you. She held this for us. She loves us. Source loves us. But she can't perpetuate. She can't permission this level of brutality on her children any longer. Now it's in our hands. I know it doesn't seem very fair. One of the shadows we face is our rage against source. You know, how could our creator permission this? And it's a really hard one to face. And a lot of us really hate our creator and feel, you know, the uh, Mark Passio did a great thing called Cosmic Abandonment. Uh, you've probably heard his thing on that. It's so true at the core of the core, one of our core wounds is, uh, that this happened to us. How did a loving God permission this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what? Yeah, uh, the ch- he gave us challenges so that we can see what we needs our attention. Yes, um, the global witness. I love that guy. He says, you know, Satan uh, is the great refiner. You know, and that's why Source permissioned it this long, because it 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 totally. Uh, is uh, reflecting our shadows, except for it's gone so far that mm, it's doing more harm than good, shall we say? <laughs> it's no longer going to be the meme that works here. That, I, you know, I think that the polarity is just maximizing, and it's, it's maximizing until it's done maximizing. So it hasn't gotten here yet. So until it's we get getting that there. End point, yeah, yeah. We and then it's going to start contracting cool. back. So the dark is getting darker and darker, but the light gets lighter. So we're we're yeah. having this extreme, but there's still that point of owning it all, but owning it all, but not having to act on it or act it out. Uh, somehow no, just identifying that is yeah. that we created this whole thing in the first place. All of us together, we created this in order to have this this. Um, a scenario upon which to play it all out. It's a big passion play. It's divine play. It's Leela. And that's how I, that's how I symbolize it. Yes, symbolize it. absolutely. Because, and so I've already identified with my multidimensional self and that I'm an eternal being. And, you know, I get, this is just an aspect. This is an avatar. I'm going to, I'm an experiencer contactee. I've been, I've been everywhere. I've been on board ship. I've, you know, done all this work. And and yet it still continues. <laughs> it keeps getting darker, and I'm going. This All right, is, well, I'm yeah, bored this with this. The, oh yeah, my, yeah. This is quite the moment we're in now. This is so intense. Mm-hmm. This is so so intense. I I'm just trying to be more and more impeccable with myself. To be, you know, I'm also working with other people, but no stuff is coming out of my unconscious. I've been working on this for 50 years, and you know, the dray this still coming is like whoa. Because it is time. And if, you know, I don't want to have some chunk of me that I didn't notice that's going to drag <laughs> me back. And there's no guarantees. So no. it takes a lot of discernment. It takes a high level of energetic discernment of my own energetic moment by moment. A huge dedication. Second by second. What are you creating? What thoughts? Mm-hmm. What feelings? Because they're having impact. You know, originally... Uh, we were creator beings, you know, up there, mm-hmm. at the 12th, 15th dimension up there. 
our thoughts, and I also had that uh, ET experience where I was uh, connected with the Galactic uh, Federation and they were showing me uh, how they created whatever they wanted to create with their thoughts and that, that there are whole races of beings that know how to do this. And this is our potential, but we got cut off from it. This is what wants to come back now. And uh, so we need to, when you really get that that's who you are, you have to be um, a lot more disciplined well, about I, what I, you're I, generating. I don't think we're really cut off from it. It's we chose to go unconscious in order to experience this level. Well, that that's a more uh, th that's better languaging. I agree that, and that's yeah. more empowering languaging because that gives us something we can do, and mm -hmm. we can, and that is exactly what we need to focus on now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. That's a better way of saying it. So I'm really curious about, and, and a lot of people use this. This Satan concept, and you know, it's just like God. It's just somebody sitting on a big throne, and and then I go back to the, the symbology. Is it came from you know the Anunnaki, and it was just the battle of the brothers and the sister, and 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 so it. So what I would like to clarify or understand or wrap my head around, I you know, I don't think it's really a person, you know, like sitting on a throne or being you know devil with tail. It's just the the point in the polarity, you know, the dark and the light. It's just another way of saying it. But um, there, the Satan, well, from my understanding, was just the adversary. You know, the satanic force was the person who lost the battle or lost the war. <laughs> and so they get labeled, you're Satan, I'm God. But it's, you know, it's just polarity playing itself out. So, Well, I think that actually Satan has taken over this world and is in control of all the religions and the governments. So the satanic Satan? forces. What is Satan? What is uh, that? Well, it would be the um, the Yahweh, the uh, you know the the the, the Trinity, uh, and and uh, you're, you're more authorities on this than I am. Well, I'm just N.K. I mean, Anaki and the Anu yeah, and the I, they created this false god imposition. They came down here. They GMO'd humanity. They enslaved humanity. And uh, they're still in. They're they're um, they're still here, and they're fighting to hold on to it with the AI for dear life. They don't want to let go of this juicy, of all of our juicy energy that they've been living off of for eons of time, and they've been doing it. And it is satanic. It, it's it is, and we got to stop <laughs> giving our energy to Satan. I mean, um, it just, to me, it's really black and white now, and I just don't mince words. I know that's, that could be very intimidating for people to hear. They're worshiping Satan when they go to their churches, but they are. Well, I think uh, that, that all the religions are false, you know, that they were created. As they're all, they're and, all, yes, yes. And, and psychological manipulation, and if you go back to the, you know, here's a story, but, it, you know, it helped me wrap my head around it. Uh, but but it's it's really... It's even more complex than that because, you know, we wouldn't exist. So it's a big catch-22. If it wasn't for how this all played out with the Anunnaki and, and, and they were just a species that came along somewhere in the middle of the game because this genetic manipulation of, of this species called Homo sapiens sapiens started millions, if not billions of years before. So this is, there's an ongoing genetic manipulation of species and, you know, splicing genes and hybridization that continues to this day. So I'd like to look at the whole picture. I know it's easier, it's easy to, you know, blame, shame, project, and put labels on people. But I think the whole story is more complex than that, than just, you know, the Anunnaki are here in charge. I don't think they're in charge. I think that they, too, um, had their surprises because they came in on the, they were unconscious. They didn't have the total recollection of the recollection of the continuum. But they, they worshiped the creator of all. So they were in the, in the little existence, you know, perceiving something outside of themselves, greater than themselves. They called it the creator of all. So I think they're just another uh, species that might have more technology and appear to be at more advanced, but they're still in the matrix. They're still in, in the game. They're not out of the game. So there are other species that are out of the game and they've got the greater perspective all the way to source, but they're, you know, the Anunnaki are still in the polarity game and the, and they, you know, they're good, bad, you know, they're just like human beings. They're complex. You know, we have our Jesuses and we have our Satans, but 
um, for my research, they, they're not the end all. There's something else beyond that. That's oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We're just we're just making this conscious as a race so that we're getting through this now. At least we're figuring it all out. I mean, what a magnificent time. Because, mm-hmm. you know, when we were born, um, when I was born, you know, went to school in the 50s, We, I thought everyone, you know, these adults knew what they were doing and everything was figured <laughs> out and everything was known. And I was in a world that was going to take care of me and life was good. And you find out, you know, a gazillion years later, still in the same body. Oh, my gosh. Everything is a lie. Everything here is has been mm-hmm. in terms of cultural conditioning and programming, government, religion, etc., parenting, all the memes, the patriarchy, it's all satanically informed. The truth does set us free. I mean, the whole point is not to freak out about all this stuff. Like, right. it's hard to take. I mean, that alone is a great reason to create inner work uh, or communities and gather and mm-hmm. just grieve together. I mean, humanity is having to face this level of deception. It's devastating. To face this, to face everything is a lie, especially the people that have big mortgages and have credit problems and really bought into the matrix. It's Mm -hmm. really hard to face like, whoops, and what do I do now? You know, it's the transition. Well, let's look at that. Let's look at that. Sasha, do you have any ideas on that? Let's hear from you. Um, Okay. What um, do we do now that we realize this is a lie? What do we do? Well, it's it's interesting when you when you uh, I, I was in a workshop with Bill Schutz where we deliberately never told the truth, where we lied on purpose as much as possible. And that's very interesting because the lie, if you trace it back, will take you uh, to what's what's motivating it. And, uh, you know, from what the uh, current Anunnaki have told us is basically. Uh, Prince Marduk, who was uh, for some time the, the loser after the bombing of uh, the uh, Sinai and Canaan, uh, uh, posed himself as all these opposing gods, and it was really different parts of, of his organization fighting uh, each mm-hmm. other while he's at the top of everything. And it's a real person uh, that uh, uh, some of my colleagues have directly talked to. And what Prince Marduk Galzu has have, have intervened, according to my research anyway, uh, and saying it's time to knock it off. It, it's the the uh, the, uh, uh, the Kali Yuga is over. It's time to enter into the Sati Yuga, the time uh, when um, we can uh, uh, really uh, feel one another, empathize with one another. And Prince Marduk said, "I'm on board. I." I'm so sorry for what I've done. I wish to make amends. Uh, Prince Marduk is Satan, incidentally. And I wish to make amends. And I had to do it. It was a, the quickening, of the terrible challenges, which are is the what you need, the kick in the ass to get you up to a higher level and to really reflect on what's, what's, go, what's going down. And whether he is on board or not, uh, the Anunnaki tell us that they have come back and they're in association with other uh, groups that are working with to preserve Earth and to, and to allow us to stop the nukes, stop the pollution, stop the hierarchy, and feel each other. If you go back to our Lyran, uh, before the Dracos inva- uh, invaded the uh, Lyrans, they were a peaceful but skyfaring uh, group of uh, people, and they and they were weren't warlike. Like they didn't have weapons, and that that is ultimately uh, our um, uh, some of us. And one of us on Apis, one of the first planets that was bombarded re- repeatedly by the Dracos, uh, and uh, a lot of them went out off at all kinds of other places. And some of them became the Greys, which retained the ability to empathize with one another. And that's what the hybridization program has been doing. It's been giving us these wonderful children that can feel other human beings and other beings, not just human beings, uh, and not just be um, so separate and, um, as, uh, you know, involved in this hierarchy, this sickness of some people uh, have a right to everything and other people are denied it because that's uh, stifling the contributions. Everybody has something unique to give because they're positioned uniquely. Uh, I think one of the things that I find useful is, you know, I w- I'm named Alexander. That's my formal name. And I said, Alexander the what? I learned ah, the great killer. Well, I, what I did is I brought all the people in my uh, deep, deep reverie that my uh, ancestors and my namesake had harmed. And I asked for my, and I asked 
forgiveness and I asked for my soul uh, parts back that left with those people. And I gave them the same right. And if you can picture all the people that you have trouble with and can do that forgiveness and ask for your soul um, bits back, as well as uh, those that your ancestors and the other lives that you uh, lived have uh, created. We can. I think that's a that's a, the kind of exercise that we can engage in that will yes. ultimately let us feel each other. Yes, yes, <laughs> it's so great. hard right now. You know, with all of these harsh truths coming out, and some of them being shocking and new to many, many people, not to you, not to me, but to many, many people, this is really shocking. And, and, and they just want to hurt someone. They want to get, shout. They want to demand their rights. They, they're doing it in immature ways rather than going, whoa, whoa, this is all me. This is, it, it's, it's the place of radical self-responsibility. It's childhood's end. It's realizing mm -hmm. that we are it. It's, it's such a sense of empowerment that we're both afraid of. And, uh, you know, we're afraid of our power. We've misused power in the past, and we don't want to use it again. It's, a lot of the women I work with, they just don't want to be powerful. You know, they've seen what power is on this planet, and they're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. It's now our time to use power in the correct way, in a non-dual way, and to heal everything and to reinvent everything and to recapacitize ourselves. Is that a word? Right. You know, where we have those capabilities. We need these healing incubator communities places to gather in small and intimate groups where we can, you know, peel this all off and flesh this all out and move to this other place. And it is a bit terrifying and it is new. We have to live completely in the unknown because either we're in these programs that they have created for us to harvest our energy or we're in the unknown and we're terrified of the unknown. So, but this is uh, the challenge and the exciting, you know, the hero. See, seeing ourselves as heroes means that we have these superpowers that are going to come back online to help us. We, we have Source is offering enormous co-creative healing capacities to us as well as God. But you're absolutely right. The forgiveness piece, the owning, bringing the soul fractals back, forgiving everything, seeing everything, owning everything. We must make it through there and then we get the capacities back because it all has to be finished. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I remember my first lie that I realized was it wasn't a, a tooth fairy. And my 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 mother said, well, the tooth fairy can't come until payday. And I, and then I realized, oh, it's all a lie. Santa Claus, <laughs> everything. That was so <laughs> And that was the first lie. So uh, there was a point, you know, when I did my inner work and I retrieved it. My mother had killed me eight times and all this stuff. You know, you just get down to it to the core. And, and, you, and uh, you come into divine, unconditional love and forgiveness that on some level, we we all together co-created this whole thing and you know I, I have the analogy of when you're watching a play right and at the end and everybody comes out and bows and we applaud who do we applaud the the the, the loudest the villain you know here's the villain in the play and they get the greatest applause because it took a lot to play that villain and that villain is the is the part that has catapulted us to the realization that the greatest power that ever existed above anything else is love. And that's why if women can really align themselves with their ability, capacity to love, because they really, you know, they have it. I mean, everybody does, but women especially, you know, because they're the ones that nurture and foster and give birth, you know, just mm -hmm. remember. They're not as embedded in the construct as, as men are energetically. Right. That's our greatest, and that's what men fear. That's why they, you know, Marianne, what you put Marianne Wilson on, our, on your Facebook page, she, she was talking about how we used to, uh, you know, rise above and they started to burn us. So over the generations, they kept burning us and burning us and burning us. So we, re we uh, stopped 
um, being who we are, which is, you know, in partnership. We, we really ultimately have a partnership society. And, and I think that women aren't showing up. That's part of it is show up as equals. And um, so I well, don't know I have how a to big, do it. Yeah, I have a lot to say about that. It's probably a whole sure. other show. And I know we're almost done here. Yeah. But mm-hmm. the um, I, I it's, it's in my book, too. It's also on the website, I guess, on just a blog post. Mm-hmm. It's uh, heal, transforming the fierce feminine as an act of sacred uh healing for our planet or something and because you have to understand that the feminine the war has been against love the war is against creation itself the creatrix of all that is the war is against the planet the the archons hate their mother they hate the earth we have been so so hated and and destroyed brutally uh, holocausted uh, for our love so what has happened to that love it's become mutated and distorted and the fierce feminine the dark feminine which is a lot of what my book is about it's a lot of what people come to me that want to transform it's what my journey has been that that huge love turned dark and served the patriarchy and we need to alchemize that power and not be afraid that if we bring it back and transmute it into love we're going to be killed again and this is why we need these incubator containers and these inner small intimate places where we feel safe enough to do that work because most of us i mean even the people that pay the money they show up and they work in it the the tear that's embedded in us is it's big i mean we can get through it and we are getting through it and it's beautiful and it's joyous and a lot of times it's fun but when you hit those layers of terror you want to run the uh, to the other side i mean if people come they make a six com- commitment they pay the money and they work re- and then they disappear because some piece of their resistance comes up and then they realize it was just a level that was so traumatic that it it threw them off the course uh until they got a hold of it then they come and then they process it and they go through it they go, i can't believe i wait all this time but it's been a rough ride for the feminine and the feminine i mean look at the feminine we have to transmute and disclose the dark feminine so that we can embody the love you can't over jump that step too much has been happened to us we have the you know there's a reason why there's so much hatred and hurt and rage and defensiveness and don't touch me don't hurt me and now they're using it the illuminati are using it getting people on the streets, you know, what are women doing? You know, they're, they're, I'm not doing this anymore. You can't do this to me, which is an important piece and we need to do it. But what is this acting out our anger, making you the enemy. And now we're, we're serving the dark agenda to polarize the sexes. As we know, when the sex is uniting, the divine sacred union is what's going to be uh, augmenting these stargate portals into the ascension timelines. And this is so the target of the war between men and women coming back together has been huge. And women are basically serving the agenda of the dark side. They're feeling no more. I'm not doing this. I'm worth something. But they're not taking it deep enough to alchemize the pain of all they've been through so that they can really be what women really are, which is the glue and the intelligence to help people stay in connection and heal and move into a solution. Women are the key. And so there's no accident that they've been highly targeted and and they're not in the position to fulfill their role of redeemer, redemption of the feminine erotic soul. So this is a big piece of what, ne- what of the shadow work that needs to be done. And even if uh, just 144,000, I hear all kinds of numbers. Maybe it's a million now. I don't know what the number is. For 7.5 billion. Doesn't have to be everybody. But every woman that takes this on at a deep enough level to really get the job done is doing it for humanity. It'll be easier for the next one. And it will become less scary because there's a gigantic block about doing this now. 
And women are sitting ducks for this manipulation now. Not all women. I'm making sweeping generalities, and I apologize for that. But if you look at what's going on with all these marches, you see humanity is trying to free itself. But they've got to free it from within because they're just being manipulated. You have two minutes. What would you like to conclude with? Sasha, you have anything to add real quick? Uh, just I love what you're saying, and let's hear your two-minute wrap-up. Oh, well, I suppose I should, uh, if this is inspiring anyone to do the work with this uh, uh, field that I'm midwifing, I'll go to shadowsynthesis.com. Uh, I have a free chat. I'll talk to you, see if help you understand what this work is. It's in parts. There's a go at your own pace part one that opens up the topic of all of this multidimensional, omnidimensional shadow work. What does it really involve? Tons of videos, uh, some beginning exercises. You can go at your own pace. So it, it totally lays out what you're going to get yourself into. So there are no surprises. And I want people just before they do the shadow diving to really get what this is and, either, and re- really decide they're going to go for it. So that's part one. And then uh, there's a six-month commitment to Shadow Synthesis 2, where we do the shadow diving in community, in pairs, uh, discounted private sessions, so you can go to that depth. And then after the six months of Shadow Synthesis 2, there's a year-long transformational catalyst training program where you can learn to midwife or mid-husband and hold space for this transformation. All of these techniques, all of these understandings, I am teaching other people to do. I'm old, and and Guy is telling me to spread this far and wide. Uh, so those are the steps I have to offer. Uh, soon in January, we'll be launching Rise Omniversity. We're looking for mentors, for other educators, uh, to create a really juicy, uh, coherent, wise, deep, clear, true uh a university where people can embody their souls and learn the true nature of everything and do the left brain understanding it and the right brain transforming so we're looking for mentors we're looking for admins and it's all there and thank you so much you're beautiful people it's just such a gift to share this space with you Sasha and Janet thank you so much for having me thank you thank you Sienna thank you listeners Thank you, Sasha. Thank you. And I'm Peter. Aloha. Yeah, hello. Okay. You're listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. And we'll be right back after this message. Thank you for listening to Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. Any commercial advertising you may hear in this program is of the sole discretion and benefit of the host of whose program you are listening to. Revolution Radio does not endorse any commercial products, nor does it accept monetary compensation for on-air advertising of commercial products, nor will it ever. We are and shall remain 100% listener supported. Any product advertising on this program are considered used at higher risk, and Revolution Radio shall not be held liable for any claims or damages received from any product advertised within this program. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. for tuning in to Revolution Radio. Here at Revolution Radio, we are listener-sponsored and commercial-free, but there still are bills to pay. In order to raise some needed funds to cover the cost, our station is offering a silver special. In the continental United States for a $60 donation, or in Alaska, Hawaii, or Canada for a $70 donation, we will send you an uncirculated 2018 one-ounce pure silver eagle. 
The $70 donation, uh, the extra 10 is to cover shipping, by the way, outside of the continental United States. When making the donation, you must put Silver Eagle promo in the notes on the donation. And thank you for tuning in to Revolution Radio at revolution.radio and freedomslips.com. Without you, there is no less. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. <laughs> 